Welcome back to the third part in this series. In this one we're going to define a model so that we can store our items that are going to be in our sort of our feed. Let's go to models. I'm just going to put that in the content API app that we created. And I'm going to say class uh, and I'm going to call the model item. It's just going to store an item, a bit of content that we're going to be able to create using the REST framework, a uh, sort of graphical interface. And we're going to inherit from models.model. And I'm also going to pretty much give it the attributes that I want. So for now, I'm just going to start off with the title and description. But later, we'll probably include uh, things like images or other sort of media files to show you how to handle media files in Django as well through that sort of API interface. Uh, so let's go and do a title. And the title can be a, a character field. So models char field and for that we need to define a maximum length that that could be I'll just say 100 and for the description I'll sort of do something similar so it's going to be models dot character field as well and it's going to have a maximum length of probably something a bit longer let's say 500 so I think I'll actually leave it at that for now, just to make sure we get the uh, API actually set up and working. What I will eventually want to do is also update the view set to be able to render the content from this particular model, I have to tell it that. But first I want to create a serializer to be able to pretty much take the data in the model and uh, turn it into JSON. So I'm going to create a new file for that, because I haven't, no, it hasn't given me one. So I'm going to, I'm actually going to delete some of the things that I don't need. So I don't need the admin file at the moment. I can always recreate them later if I do need them. Uh, that's got some stuff in it. I'll leave that file. I'm going to delete tests for now. Usually if I want to make tests, I'll create a folder called tests and split it up more anyway. So I'll delete that as well. So now we've just got model views and apps migrations. So I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to put it in the same folder and I'm going to call it serializers.py and from REST framework we just want to import serializers uh, sorry that's a lowercase s uh, it's, it's not a class definition as such it's just a uh, sort of module which you need to import I'm going to do class and this is going to be the serializer which is going to serialize the model we just created so I'm going to call it item serializer and it's going to inherit from what we just imported serializers dot model serializer because in relation to a model it could just be a serializer on its own but then we'd have to sort of give it something to serialize so a model is a nice way of doing that in other words it's going to serialize something from the database so that's normally quite a difficult thing to do but rest framework makes it really easy for us to be able to do I'm going to just uh, create that class definition and the serializers, they actually require a meta class, what's called a meta class in Python. So meta classing can get kind of complicated, but pretty much it is just a normal Python class whose instances are themselves classes. I'm just going to uh, make sure it says class meta and this is sort of indented from the serializer so it's sort of like a uh, sort of nested inside and it, this is going to have a couple of attributes and this is going to tell our serializer what we actually uh, want to communicate with so what model do we want to use and which fields do we want to use from that model so I'm going to say model is equal to uh, item that's why it's handy to correspond the name of the serializer with the name of the model because it's just more readable that way and of course we haven't got item in this file so I need to import it so I need to do from uh, content API underscore sorry content underscore api uh, dot models and i'm going to import item so that's nice and explicit i'm also going to define fields and this is going to be uh, pretty much any of the fields that we want in the api response so, uh, so we can choose from title description and also id so remember when we define a model in python we also get that id field uh, created for us within the migrations so I'm going to include all of them, I think, because it can be really helpful in our API design to, to have that unique identifier. So what 
what most people would probably do is do something like ID, uh, I'm going to do title and description. And that would work fine because it is a tuple uh, that you should define. But in Python, you don't actually need, in this case, to have the parentheses around it. So Python is still going to know, as long as you've got strings separated by commas, that that is a tuple. Next, what I want to do then is I want to update the actual view that it uses. So at the moment, we've got a very basic uh, list view, which is this view here, at uh, API test. And that just returns uh, a hard-coded string at the moment. So we want to also connect the view set to the model. Now in place of this test view set, I'm actually going to uh, inherit from model view set instead. I'm going to call it item view set, because that makes more sense with what the other things that we are that we are defining. And I'm actually going to remove this for now, because we are going to be able to inherit this list method. Remember the special list method for this list uh, view in, in the Django REST framework. And uh, though we could override it later, we don't currently need that at the moment, so I'm going to remove it. And because it's a model view set, I do need to define some attributes to specify a couple of things, a bit like we did with the serializer, uh, as to what it needs to reference to be able to create the views. So I need to define the query set, which is going to be what objects from the model in the database that we want to use. Do we want to use everything or do we want to use a subset? of everything in the database, because you don't necessarily want everything, you could filter it down at this point if you wanted to. And I also want to tell it, I want to point it to the serializer so that it can actually render it as JSON. So let's go ahead and define query set, and that's going to be equal to item.objects.all. So in this case it is going to be all the objects. I'm also going to import the model again, so from api.models I'm going to import item and I'm also going to define, uh, so we've got the query set and I also need the uh, serializer. So let's say serializer is equal to item serializer. And that is just going to pass a reference to that class. You don't need to instantiate it with parentheses on the end. So that's fine. Sorry, I think it's actually uh, the serializer class attribute that we want to override, not serializer. But I think that is it for uh, for what we actually need to implement. I'm going to go back over and so at the moment the server is complaining. This is complaining about installed apps. So I'm just going to double check I've got that in the installed apps. Uh, so I haven't actually installed the uh, API yet at all. So apparently that's only raised when we define that model because it was working without a model definition before. So I'm going to do content API there. I'm just going to put it on the end of that list. And uh, now, oh, so item serializer is not defined. I think we've probably missed an import. This is coming from content API views, as you can see there. So I'm going to go back to that file. I'm going to import that as well. So from content API dot serializers, import item serializer. Otherwise, of course, it doesn't know what this is referring to. So I've also missed. Uh, something else, cannot import test view set, okay so we need to update the URLs as well. So let's go to do that, I'm going to say item view set and this is instead of test view set I'm going to import item view set. I'm going to call this item, yeah item will be fine I think. So let's see if that works. Okay so this is currently running correctly but we have to find a model and I don't think we've run the migrations yet. So I'm actually going to exit out of that and I'm going to do Django admin uh, make migrations uh, content API. You don't have to specify the app because we haven't got migrations in more than one app but what I'm saying here is I want to make the migrations but I only want it to make them for models defined within the content API Django app. So this one where we've defined the model in other words. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. It says created the model, that's great. So now I need to apply what we've just created as a migration. If you want to have a look at that first, we can always go to migrations and it says initial migration. And here you can see that ID field that I was talking about. And that's why we can refer to it in the meta class uh, in the serializer. So we've got ID, title and description. 
So that is where it sort of creates it. And auto field just means it sort of auto automatically increments itself. So it's going to be one, two, three for the first, second, and third uh, record in the database, respectively. Uh, but that's what a migration looks like if you haven't seen one. Now I'm going to do migrate. So Django admin migrate is going to apply that to our database. And I'm going to do Django admin run server as well to see what to see if it works. I'm going to go back here and if I refresh, so at the moment we've got a blank list. So that's because we haven't got anything in our database, but that's that should be a, good. That should mean that everything is working. So I'm going to say this is a title, and I'm pretty much going to say uh, some test data so that we can see if it works. So I'm going to say post, and nice. So this is actually pretty cool because the REST framework has not only given us that full CRUD functionality to be able to uh, see the items in a list view, but if we take the ID, we can actually put that on the end of the URL, and we can say one, and that goes to the detail view. And here we can actually edit the item in the list that's given by that specified ID. We can even delete that item through the Django REST framework interface. And it's very, very powerful because we've got that function functionality out of the box with very, very small amount of code. If we go back to the views, you can see that we haven't done anything custom. It works straight out of the box, which is really, really nice. And it saves us a lot of time and effort of having to define you know, this is the get method, this is the put method, this is the post method, this is what we want them to do specifically, because we tend to want them to do the same thing. And uh, this always sort of inherits best practices as well. So this is going to make it a nice RESTful API, and it's going to be quicker for us to code because we haven't had to write much code for us to be able to do that. One last thing I want to do really quickly is I want to rename the URL, because I forgot to do that earlier. So I'm going to go and say, uh, instead of test, I want to call it item just to correspond with our changes that we made today. And I'm going to go to item, just to double check that works. And I can see it also works with that because we've changed what the uh, sort of main URL segment that is registered to the default router in our URLs file. In the next one, I'm gonna look at maybe writing a bit of front end code so that we can display it nicely into the browser. And I'm gonna sort of use a, a few more front end technologies as well than I have in the past. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit more complicated than the to-do list application which just had the static files within the Django application itself. But in development, uh, we, we could quite easily make that two separate projects. So that's what we're going to show you how to set up in the next video.